Next, we will give a few case studies in industry and present the details of the applications as well as the encounter challenges for explainable AI. The first such study is Diversity Insights with the LinkedIn Talent Platform, which is a joint work with Krishnaram. This ties into the explainable AI through making sense of the recommendations within the talent search products at LinkedIn. Guiding principle for our product approach at LinkedIn is diversity by design. This means that we are not building a separate diversity product or diversity filter, but rather integrating diversity insights through every step of our customer's talent strategy. Motivated by LinkedIn's goal of creating economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce, and by a keen interest from our customers in making sure uh, that they are able to source diverse talent, we have adopted such an approach in our uh, LinkedIn talent platform as well. And this platform consists of insights and search products. Building diverse and inclusive teams is the number one talent priority for HR and talent acquisition professionals. Research shows that diversity is tied directly to company culture and financial performance. In fact, 78% of companies prioritize diversity for culture improvement and 62% for financial performance based on LinkedIn data. Now, diversity by design in the, in the talent solutions manifests itself in three main pillars. The first one is providing insights to identify and source from diverse talent pools for hiring professionals. The second one is for the, these tools to show themselves in the representative talent search results. And the third one is the diversity learning curriculum. We will be focusing on the first two points in this presentation. Let's first talk about planning for diversity. Gender insights, as part of LinkedIn Talent Insights, help our customers plan for diverse teams, set hiring goals, and identify talent pools for greater gender representation. Using gender insights, LinkedIn's customers can gauge the gender representation of their workforce, benchmark against industry peers, and identify teams that have the biggest room for improvement. These insights could be a per persuasive tool to set realistic hiring goals that account for greater representation. The talent pool report, as part of LinkedIn Talent Insights, include gender insights in the location, industry, title, and skills tabs to help customers identify talent pools with greater gender representation. These insights are powerful to inspire and influence leaders to hire qualified candidates from new industries or locations that their recruiting team may have otherwise overlooked. Furthermore, on the explainability front, such a report helps the hiring managers and recruiters to make sense on the distribution of genders over the candidate recommendations they receive, should they, require, should they query for the candidates within a specific pool. Finally, gender insights in job descriptions and email reports help teams understand their email acceptance rates and post the job performance by gender. These insights serve to flag and identify opportunities for more inclusive job descriptions and email outreach. As we have previously shown, the talent pool report aims to ex also explain diversity among the recommended candidates if the recruiter decides to query for candidates within that pool. On the other hand, the expectation is also for the candidate recommendations to be representative of the underlying pool. For this purpose, we would like to next talk about our efforts on representative ranking for talent search. The goal of LinkedIn talent search system is to provide a tool that recruiters and hiring managers can use to source suitable talent for their needs. This is mainly accomplished through the LinkedIn recruiter product which recruiters use to identify talent pools that are optimized for the likelihood of making a successful hire. The recruiter product provides a rank list of candidates corresponding to a search request in the form of a query, a job posting, or an ideal candidate. Given a search request, candidates that match the request are first selected and then ranked based on a variety of factors. These could be similarity of their work experience and skills with the search criteria, job posting location, and the likelihood of a response from, from the interested candidate. 
multiple passes of machine learned models are used to rank candidates. And with a representative ranking approach, recruiters search is able to deliver representative results that reflect the gender distribution of the underlying talent. Next, we would like to present the intuition which led to a representative ranking approach. This is independent of the product considerations that we showed previously, but we'd rather want to talk about right now in terms of a perspective from a fairness aware machine learning consideration. Our measurement and mitigation approach for fair ranking assumes that in the ideal setting, the set of qualified candidates and the set of top rank results for a search request both should have the same distribution on the attribute of interest. This means the ranked and recommended list should be representative of the qualified list. Such an assumption could be thought of as based on the definition of equal opportunity defined in prior research in machine learning. In mathematical terms, a predictor function is set to satisfy equal opportunity with respect to an attribute and true outcome if the predictor and the attribute are independent, conditional on the true outcome being one. In our case, this one would mean favorable or a qualified candidate. In our setting, we assume that the LinkedIn members that match the criteria specified by recruiters in a search request are qualified for the search request. We can roughly map to the definition of equal opportunity as follows. The predictor function in our case corresponds to whether a candidate is present in top rank results, in this, which is a, as a response to the search request, and the true outcome corresponds to whether this candidate matches the search request criteria, hence is qualified. Satisfying this definition means that whether or not a member is included in top rank results should not depend on the attribute of interest, or equivalently, that the proportion of members belonging to a given value of attribute should not vary between the set of qualified candidates and the set of top rank results. Such a requirement can also be thought of as seeking statistical parity between the set of qualified candidates and the set of top rank results. Hence, the operating definition of equal and fair is towards achieving rank results that are representative in terms of the attribute of interest and in the scope of this work, this attribute of interest being inferred gender. We define qualified population to be the set of candidates that match the criteria set forth in the recruiter's query. For example, if the query is something like um, people who can code in Java and is in San Francisco Bay Area, then the qualified population is all the members that reside in, the, in San Francisco Bay Area and uh, can code in Java. How do we compute these desired proportions in the case where the desired proportions come, uh, desired gender proportions come from the qualified candidate list? We utilize LinkedIn's internal Galene search engine to obtain these set of qualified candidates that match the criteria specified within the search query by the user. Then we compute the empirical distribution over the genders to understand the required gender representation constraints. And this distribution is utilized for computing our representation metrics and applying re-ranking. Next, let's give a brief overview of our representative ranking algorithm. The algorithm works via bucketizing the retrieved candidates for each attribute value and merging these buckets with considering uh, the representation requirements. Furthermore, each bucket is ranked using a machine learning model. In our KDD paper, we introduce multiple methods on how we merge ranked bucketized candidate list. This work was presented in KDD 2019, and we would like to invite the interested uh, researchers to check out that paper. To understand the impact of representative ranking approach, we ran an A-B test over our recruiter user set for two weeks. During this evaluation, 50% of the users were assigned to a baseline algorithm which directly ranks candidates through the scores generated by the machine learning model, and the rest of the users were assigned to representative ranking algorithm. In total, hundreds of thousands of recruiters were included in the A-B testing and validation uh, work that went into this change. We have found out that representative ranking approach caused no significant change in our business metrics, 
such as the number of emails sent or accepted, hence meaning that ensuring representation does not negatively impact our customer success metrics. On the other hand, we have seen that over 95% of all searches were now representative compared to the qualified population of the search. Based on the results of our evaluation of the representative ranking approach, we decided to ramp the representative ranking to an even wider audience. Currently, 100% of LinkedIn recruiter users worldwide are presented candidates which go through the representative ranking process, helping to provide equal economic opportunity for all the members of the workforce. Following are some of the lessons we learned during the implementation and deployment of representative ranking strategy. First of all, as can be seen from the method, this is a re-ranking approach, hence is post-processing the results of the rank original ranking. We decided to focus on the, uh, the post-processing approach for this type of ranking due to the following practical consideration. First, Applying such a post-processing methodology is agnostic to the specifics of each model, this being the ranking models, and hence it is scalable across different model choices for the same application and also across other similar applications. Second, in many practical internet applications, domain-specific business logic is typically applied prior to displaying the results from the machine learning model to the end user. Hence, it is more effective to incorporate bias mitigation as the very last step of the pipeline. Third, such an approach is easier to incorporate as part of existing systems compared to modifying the training algorithm or the features. Since we can build a standalone service or component for post-processing without significant modifications to the existing components. In fact, our experience in practice suggests that post-processing is significantly easier than eliminating bias from training data or during model training, especially due to redundant encoding of attributes of interest and the likelihood of both the model choices and features evolving over time. However, we do remark, we would li like to remark that efforts to eliminate and reduce bias from our training data or during model training can still be explored. And this kind of uh, efforts should be thought of as complementary to our approach and our approach acting as a failsafe is the last step. Last thing, la last thing we would like to list here is that our experience suggests that building consensus and achieving collaboration across key stakeholders such as product, legal, PR, engineering, as well as AI teams uh, is a prerequisite for such successful adoption of fairness aware approaches in practice. Such an effort, of course, is not a single person job and it requires collaboration over multiple teams. This is a cross-functional initiative and we have received help from many people and we would like to acknowledge multiple teams and colleagues as listed here. We would like to complete the discussions of this case study with a holistic view of Fairness Aware AI lifecycle and a few other efforts on fairness aware machine learning at LinkedIn. The life cycle for a fairness aware AI based approach starts with the problem formulation, where one needs to consider whether an automated approach is even desirable or ethical for a, for a use case. Next, we need to look at the data set construction, where we need to in include enough minority samples and question the data sets integrity, as well as understand the missing or biased features that might be in our data set, as well as we need to understand whether we need to pre-process our data. Next comes algorithm selection and training process where we need to understand whether fairness constraints should be included and at the testing time how we need to be evaluating uh, the model or the, learn the algorithm uh, towards its impacts and whether uh, some unintended biases might have seeped through. Once we deploy, of course, there are online experimentation and we need to understand what kind of populations are impacted and whether there are unequal effects of the new algorithm or mob model uh, across different types of users. 
Finally, we need to understand the feedback and aggravating effects of fairness and whether our model actually encourages feedback loops that produces even further problems that are already existing. To achieve such a life cycle at LinkedIn, there are a couple of works that are in progress. We would like to list two of them here. The first one is a fair scale approach, which aims to evaluate and mitigate unintended biases in AI solution at the time of pre-processing, model training, as well as post-processing. We also look uh, through a uh, fair scale into online evaluation while measuring and monitoring fairness metrics in real time. Here is an offline architecture for fair scale as presented in the diagram. We will not go into the details, but in general, we could list here that fair scale aims at providing flexibility of use while being platform agnostic and to scale for big data applications. We also implement several fairness metrics within the system. As a final use case, we would like to list an approach here towards fairness aware experimentation. Recently, a blog post at LinkedIn Engineering site was published on this on this work as well. So we would like to invite the interested researchers to check it out. At LinkedIn, while we made it easier for professionals to connect and build community, not everyone has the right connections to land opportunities they want. Where you grew up, where you went to school, and where you work play directly into this network gap. As the world's large profe largest professional network, LinkedIn has a unique ability to help close the network gap through our products, our company programs, and our people. It is natural for us to incorporate fairness checks as part of our experimentation platform, so we ensure there is no in unintended consequences with the new treatments among various products. For a simple example of how a new treatment can cause unfairness, please check these two cases, which both increase sessions by one on average, but one creating significant imbalance among members. This is the kind of behavior we would like to understand and mitigate via careful monitoring of experiments at LinkedIn. Thanks a lot for listening to me today, and this concludes our case study, which started as a diversity insights approach and how they can be linked towards explainability, but then morphed into a discussion of several fairness efforts at LinkedIn. As a final note, we would like to reiterate LinkedIn's vision is, is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce, regardless of your background, industry, or role. We believe that two people with equal talent should have equal access to opportunity and focus our efforts towards making this vision a reality. Have a nice day.